we want to explore state machines. However, when we explore state machines, we want to understand how it actually works before coding it. So the way we're going to do this in this video, this is going to be a little more unique than what I usually do, but I'm going to explain this on a diagram and then we're going to move into Godot and we're going to implement the state machine inside of Godot using code. So this will be a very simple state machine using idle and move state. So let's get right into it and let's go into the diagram. So the first thing we're going to do is we're, let's start with our player. If I have my brush, there we go. Here is our player. And this will consist of the actual scene of the player and the script. So we have a script plus the player. Okay. Now this guy, this object is going to be connected to a class called character body 2D, which you might be familiar with. Now this character body enables the player to do things, including have gravity, move and slide, all these functions that you already know that the player can do. Now we want to create a state machine. So let's create a new diagram and have this called dates or state. Now this state will consist of two subclasses. I'll have one here. This will be the idle state state. And then we'll have another. And this will be the walk state. All right. So let's see if we can understand this a little bit. So these states over here, so all these states is a class. Each one of these are classes. So the walk state and the idle state are subclasses of the state. And the state is a subclass of the player itself or not a subclass, but a more so a connection, a node of it. So in our state, we're going to have things like speed. So we'll say variable speed equals 40 max speed, whatever. We'll also do change. We'll also have a function called change state. Okay. And we can pass through, for example, idle. Now this will allow us to go from walk state to state and then to idle state. So it'll allow us to change states. Okay. So if I called change state from here, so if I say change state, <clears throat> if I can type, there we go to idle, we will go here, figure out what's happening and then go into the idle state. Okay. Now, in our actual state, we will be able to set up these states and do all that stuff inside of Godot, which I'll show you how to do. However, inside of these states, right, inside of the idle and walk state, we want to figure out what to do. So first of all, we need a condition that will help us go from walk state to idle state, right? So that condition is essentially if not moving, then change idle, right? If I can type or, uh, I don't know, I can't do anything. <laughs> now from our idle, we want to go from idle to chain to walk state. And we can do that by adding a condition. If moving, right, we'll do, we'll show you how to do that in a second. We'll say if moving, then change to move or walk in this case, right? So this will allow us to, we have now two conditions that will allow us to go from idle or from walk to idle and from idle to walk. Okay. So now let's take this into Godot and explore how to actually do this in code. So in Godot, let's open up our Godot project. Now I've already finished everything essentially. However, I'll basically be going through everything that you need to know. So. Let's go into our player and let's see, let's look at our setup first. So here we have the floor. So it's a static body and I've shown the collision shape. And here we have a player as a character body 2D. And if we look into our script, we just have a script that extends the character body. We have a variable called state 
And in our ready state, we also have gravity. And in our, let's look at our physics process actually very easily. So we have moving slides so that our player actually moves in slides. And then we just have gravity. So this is gravity to allow us to push our player down. Now, the rest of the movement is handled within the states. Okay. So in our state or in our ready function, we were, we're going to create the node state to hold our states. So here we say state is equal to state.new. And then we're going to name that state node that we just created, and we're going to name it to state. So it's not named gibberish. And then we're going to add the child to our player. And then we're going to change the state in our idle. So we've call, we're calling a function inside of our state, uh, state machine, essentially. OK, so let's take a look at our state script. So here I have, as we said, from our diagram, we have set the speed, right? So we have speed and we have max speed and acceleration, and we also have states and current state. So states will hold all these states that exist within the game, okay? Or within the player, I suppose. So we have idle and walk, all right? Now we also have current state. This will allow us to hold the current state outside of the um, change state function. Now we'll look at the change state function in a second, but let's go to our idle state. So in our idle state, the first thing we want to do is get access to our player. So in order to do that, we just say ready at ready function. We say get parent dot get parent. Now when I play, let me show you why we do that. Because here, here's our idle state node. We get parent, we go to state and we get parent one more time. Now, unfortunately, I'm not sure why actually, if you have the answer, you can actually let me know. Uh, I tried getting access to the player inside of the state, but it wouldn't let me. Um, I'm not sure why. So uh, it just wouldn't really persist. So I ended up having to get access to the player um, individually inside of each state. So if you can figure that out, definitely let me know in the comments below. But either in either case, we will get access to the player inside of each walk state and idle state within the state itself. So in our idle state, let's go back to our idle state. Here we have player, we have access to our player. And now here in the physics process, Let's ignore this for now. Let's ca cut that. Here we have setting the player's velocity to zero, essentially. So this lerp function essentially takes our current player velocity and sets it to zero over a certain amount of time. So it basically slows our player down. It's kind of like friction. OK, this is kind of how I like to do it. So e either way, you could just set it to zero. And it's like the same thing. All right. So we talked about conditions to allow us to change states. Now remember here from our idle state, we want to move. We want to say if moving, we want to change to move. Now the way I did this is really simple. So because we're in a platformer, we all we can have to do is say um, if input is action pressed UI right, then we'll change to walk. And elif is action left clicked, then we'll change state to walk. Right? You could also just take this and say or is action press. That could probably also work, but I just did an LF statement just for um, having it fit on the screen. So on now in the walk state, remember in our diagram, we want a condition to go from the walk state to idle state, right? So here we can see that if we're going to check for movement from the right and left, now let's ignore that and see else. So the else essentially is us telling us, or the state is telling us, okay, we're not moving anymore. So let's change to change state to idle. Okay. Now this stuff, this velocity will allow us to basically set the velocity to, um, a velocity that I like to do. It kind of, uh, maximizes it. So this is kind of the equations that I use. So don't worry too much about it, about this actual equation, but if you would like to use this in your platformer, go for it. Okay. So in the state, let's take a look at the change state now. The change state basically first checks to see if we have a child. Now, the beauty of this change state is that it will only allow us to have one state at a time. Now, if you don't want that, you would have to figure out some other way to change states or whatever. But this is the way I've done it. So first, we check to see if our child count is not zero, meaning if we do have something, we're going to get that child. So get child idle or zero and Q free. We're going to destroy it. OK, now that we've destroyed it, we're going to now get the new name in our dictionary. So let's say I pass through walk, right? I pass through the condition, the string walk. I want to now get the walk state and create a new node. So I'm going to basically say this walk state dot new. OK, 
And then I'm going to do the same thing as in my from my player, right? So here we set the name and then we add child and that's it. So we set the name and then we add the child and that's it. That's all I have to do to change states. It's really easy. So all I do to change states is I add and destroy the children. Okay. So, or I destroy and then add the children in that order because I don't want to add and then destroy it kind of messes things up. And so now we get a nice smooth walk state. Now, if I go into remote, I should be able to see it change manually. There you go. You can see it change from walk to idle and walk and idle to walk. Okay. And you can see it's a, a little delayed, but that's okay. That's just the remote being a little slow and that's it. So hopefully you guys have learned how to create state machines and how that actually works. If not, um, I wish you luck and I, I'm sorry I couldn't help you out, but uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did, go subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of more tutorials on my channel um, for Godot and hopefully more coming soon. So if you guys did, definitely go subscribe and go like and share and comment on this video. If you also would like to support me, I have some Udemy courses that you should definitely check out. They'll be in the link down below that you can click on. And I also have a Patreon if you want to support me there. Um, it's totally up to you, but um, I will always be on YouTube kind of giving you guys content. So don't worry too much about that. Um, but it, it is great, greatly appreciated. I also do have some other links down below, um, including my Discord and Twitch. Sometimes I all stream games and stuff. Um, and that's it. So I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.